What this shows us is that Jesus is the perfect law keeper. Jesus is the perfect law keeper. We remember back from chapter 1, Jesus goes into the wilderness for his time of temptations. Now Mark did not, did not narrate to us the specific temptations that came to Jesus. But the other Gospels did. Matthew and Luke did. And so we're familiar with those. We're familiar with the specific temptations that came to Jesus. And do you remember how he answered each of those with Scripture? And do you remember how he answered the temptation with these words, you shall not tempt the Lord your God, or you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Remember that one? Does anybody remember what temptation Jesus was answering when he quoted that Scripture? It's in your notes, so you can cheat if you want to look down. But does anybody remember what Jesus was answering when he said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. He was answering Satan's temptation to say, if you are the Son of God, show us by jumping off the pinnacle of the temple. Because everybody knows that the Father is not going to let you go splat on the ground. He's going to send his angels. And you're not even going to dash your foot on the ground. So show us that you're the Son of God by jumping off the temple and we'll all see God rescue you. And Jesus answers by saying, Shut up. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. So what Jesus is rebuking Satan for there is the sin of presuming upon God or putting God to the test. So when he says you should not put the Lord your God to the test, he doesn't mean that God's not trustworthy. He doesn't mean that God's not faithful, that God cannot be relied upon to save Jesus should he need saving. What he means is, it is sinful to presume upon the power of God in such a way that causes you to take unnecessary risks, make unwise decisions, or to fail to be properly prepared for a situation. Jesus says it's sinful to neglect those things or to say, you know what? God's got my back. I'm going to do this anyway. I'm going to jump off the temple anyway. God's got my back. He's not going to let me hit the ground. Jesus says that is putting the Lord your God to the test by presuming upon His providence. And Jesus says that's a sin. And this is precisely what Jesus would have been doing in the face of this threat against His life in Capernaum should He have said, you know what? I'm immortal. I'm invincible until it's time for me to die on the cross. You ever hear Christians talk like that? We are invincible until it's time for until it's God's time for us to die. Which there's truth in that. But had Jesus said, no, 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 that I hear, and his disciples maybe came to him and said, Jesus, there's this credible threat against your life. And Jesus says, nah. Just sort of blew it off. What he's saying is that would have presumed upon the power of God in such a way that was unnecessary. The same thing here with the crowd. This crowd, which is creating sort of this dangerous situation, Jesus, instead of presuming, you know, the Father's going to protect me. This crowd's not going to hurt me because I'm here to die on a cross on a certain day and it's not that day. Today's not that day. Instead of saying that, Jesus says, no, no, no. The wise, responsible thing for me to do is to not presume upon the Father, but instead to take the steps that are wise and necessary in case I need to follow them. 